When people discuss weaponry, there's a lot of focus on modern innovation. Things like machine guns and atomic bombs. But before all that stuff existed, there were still very dangerous weapons out there that could cause serious damage. They may be no nukes, but they still struck terror into the hearts of anyone who saw them. These are the 20 most feared weapons in ancient history. Number 20, Siege Towers. If you saw your enemy approach you in battle, you might be prepared to handle the onslaught of terror. However, once the medieval siege towers were built, you might not be so confident when confronted with a tower the size of a castle wall with armed men. Medieval siege towers were built to house an army's spearmen, swordsmen, archers, or crossbowmen when attacking their enemy in battles. These domineering constructions were as tall as a wall and even taller if there were archers present, and they even had wheels. Wow, you don't see one of these every day. A full-size replica. They were a smart addition to warfare during the medieval period, as they had an element of protection for their army, as well as an advantage of height. However, these battle towers were not totally foolproof. They were made from wood, which made them completely flammable, and were often the first thing that catapults would hit. As a matter of fact, these siege towers would often be constructed at the site of the siege itself. This did not hinder their popularity from the 11th century BC all the way to the year 626 in the medieval period. The biggest siege tower in history boasted a height of 40 meters, about nine stories tall and 20 meters wide. It was called the Heliopolis and despite its worrying size, it merely got stuck in the mud during battle. Now it's time for the strange topic. If your enemies had one of these, you'd be quaking in your boots 100%. This terrifying thing is a battering ram to end all battering rams. Decked from top to bottom with sharp bronze spikes, if this thing was slammed into a door, the spikes would pierce the wood. That greatly increased the swiftness which with doors could be yanked from their hinges. In medieval times, a good battering ram was a necessity, and few were more intense than this one. Very few buildings could take more than five hits from this thing, making it the best battering ram ever used. They call it a kingdom crumbler. While none still exist in full glory, this one here is an attempted restoration that captures a glimpse of how striking they were. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag strange topic. Number 19, Medieval Cannons. Once cannons were introduced to medieval warfare, no one was safe. No ship, no warrior, no castle, no wall. The cannons were made using cast iron or bronze. In fact, their construction closely mimicked that of a bell. In order to cast the cannon out of its chamber, one had to light a trail of gunpowder that led from the cannon chamber and boom, pretty scary, right? The sound was unheard of and unnerving for medieval people, both warriors and normal people alike. It took many years to perfect the functions and effectiveness of a cannon, as most of the early versions might have been more counterproductive than useful at the time. As the use of cannons became more popular and widespread, they developed different names in different countries. For example, they were also called pot de fer in French, which translates to iron pot. Not only were large cannons used for destruction, but soon came the invention of medieval stone cannon balls, which were a lot smaller and did not project at quite a far distance, but they were much cheaper to make and easier to use and to come by. The cannons are a recognizable medieval weapon today, and for good reason. They did serious damage and struck much terror in the hearts of warriors throughout the years. Number 18, the Quacha. If someone mentioned something called a fire chariot, surely some shocking images may come to mind. Well, in 16th century Korea, a weapon called the Kwacha was used, which loosely translates to fire chariot. Now, this weapon was not in fact a chariot, it was instead a rocket launcher, which is no less alarming if you ask me. It was used during the Imjin War, where Japan had attempted to conquer Korea, but was instead met with this deadly weapon, and were useless against it. It is said by some historians, that this invention was a serious technological breakthrough for the time and will certainly go down in history. Or, I guess maybe it already did. 
The Hwacha's most memorable usage was during this war between Korea and Japan. However, it had already existed for roughly 200 years by then, as they had first appeared in 1409 in Korea during the Joseon Dynasty. The Hwacha was able to fire 100 to 200 arrows in one shot. The arrows were triggered by a tube of gunpowder and fired through the hole of the contraption. The arrows were called Singijeon, which also loosely translates to magical machine arrows. So, in short, there was once a weapon called the Fire Chariot, which shot magical machine arrows at its enemy. Pretty cool, right? Sounds like it comes straight out of a Game of Thrones episode. Number 17. Ancient Roman Scorpio Catapult Ancient weapons often have intriguing names. One in particular is the Scorpion. This weapon was used in ancient Rome as a type of torsion siege engine. If this sounds as strange to you as it does to me, it basically means that the contraption used a torsion, or a twisting type of mechanics to launch projectiles at an enemy. This was a smaller piece of machinery and used as a sniper weapon. Stones were commonly used as ammunition for the scorpion, and only one man was needed to operate the machine. Julius Caesar referred to the scorpion as far back as 52 BC during the siege of Avaricum in the war against the Gauls. This weapon had the advantage of precision and was able to shoot at a distance of 100 meters. However, if you wanted it to, the scorpion could reach up to 400 meters but with much less precision. The ammunition would greatly wound the enemy as their shields were no match for the scorpion. But eventually, the scorpion was phased out as more modern technology fixed all of the contraption's shortcomings. Number 16, Greek fire. Flamethrowers, fires, and enemies, oh my! The Eastern Roman Empire was notorious for setting fire to enemy ships using what was called the Greek fire. This Greek fire was in fact a combustible compound that was triggered by a flame-throwing weapon in order to take down ships at sea. The compound was most likely that of naphtha and quicklime, which made for the highly flammable properties. Though this is still disputed, as some historians argue that the compound was a mixture of perhaps pine resin, sulfur, or calcium phosphide. After its inception, the Byzantines were quick to apply it to their warfare and use it in naval battles. The method of destruction was very effective and is often credited for any of the Byzantine battle victories and even ensure the survival of the empire when Constantinople was under siege by the Arabs. The effect that the Greek fire had on the ever-evolving methods of warfare was great, as even the European crusaders referred to any sort of fire dynamic weapon as Greek fire. The idea for the modern-day flamethrower stemmed from these Greek fire inventions as the Byzantines used pressurized nozzles to pour liquid onto their enemy. Number 15, Medieval Trebuchet. Before gunpowder, there were catapults, which, for medieval warriors, might have been just as terrifying. A trebuchet was one type of siege engine or catapult. However, one caveat is that a trebuchet could launch a greater mass at a greater distance than most types of catapults during this time. In the lands around the Mediterranean during the 12th century, both Christians and Muslims who inhabited the land used what was known as counterweight trebuchets. These were the most powerful trebuchets in comparison to the ones that appeared in China in the 4th century. The design allows for the force to cause rotational acceleration of a beam around an axle where a sling begins to rotate with the beam in order to increase the speed of projection. These beams were roughly 15 meters in length, some even longer. These counterweight trebuchets were often given the title of the most powerful weapon during the Middle Ages. When the Mongols discovered their existence, they brought these counterweight trebuchets back to China, where the first iteration of the trebuchet was created by the 13th century. Number 14, the Maxim gun. In 1884, a man by the name of Hiram Stevens Maxim invented the first fully automatic machine gun in the world. Before Hiram's invention, there were certainly a multitude of guns used in battle. However, they were all hand-cranked guns. The weapon caused severe damage in its time and has even been referred to as the weapon most associated with imperial conquest. By 1917, the Maxim gun's popularity traversed the globe so that every major army was using the new invention. The gun was used during the invasion and colonization of Africa between 1833 and 1914. 
Not only did the Europeans who annexed African land during the new imperialism use the Maxim gun, but it was also used by the Russian and the Japanese armies during the Russo-Japanese War. Tehran's invention was used all the way into the First and Second World Wars. The gun featured a recoil-operated firing system, which led to the invention of the machine gun as well as other gun variants. Another reason the Maxim gun's design was so influential was that it was water-cooled. This meant that the rate of fire was able to be sustained for longer than the Maxim gun's counterparts, which were air-cooled. Ultimately, the Maxim gun could fire 600 rounds per minute, causing absolute destruction in its path. Number 13. Battering Ram Breaking and entering nowadays often requires the ability to pick a lock, diary an alarm, or find an open window. However, back in ancient times, people required a weapon called a battering ram in order to break in. The battering ram was used to take down masonry walls or break apart wooden gates in order to storm a dwelling. Essentially, the weapon was a giant log propelled by the force of men against its obstacle. The ram was effective during ancient times as the materials used for buildings were quite weak and could be blasted through by the weapon and repeated force. The battering ram later became siege cannons which used gunpowder to propel iron balls instead of a mere log of wood. The invention of the battering ram clearly made its mark and can be traced back to the 11th dynasty of ancient Egypt. They were notably used in the Crusades, the Siege of Constantinople, and the Sack of Rome. A modern day version of the same concept would include handle-held battering rams that perhaps a police officer or military officer might use to break inside a building. Number 12. Ballista Most weapons ultimately have a similar goal which often includes the launching of ammunition or the projection of the weapon. This can be seen throughout history's various weapons, including the ballista, also known as a bolt thrower. This weapon was aptly named as the objective of the bolt thrower was to throw bolts or stones at the target. The ballista was an iteration of earlier Greek weapons. One thing that set its modern mechanics apart was the fact that it used torsion springs rather than a tension prod, which can be demonstrated on a crossbow. The crossbow was a very influential piece of weaponry for the ballista, which later took the invention of the torsion springs to take it one step further. The initial ammunition used for the weapon were things like heavy darts or stones that were propelled by the object. Like many weapons that existed during ancient times, the ballista was a type of siege weapon and were sometimes even placed in siege towers. The ballista took on many iterations as the invention passed through different civilizations. For example, the Greek version is very different from the Roman version, which is even different from the Eastern Roman version, and so on. From the ballista came the inventions of even more precision weapons, such as the Scorpio and the Polybolos. Number 11. Claw of Archimedes A claw, a snatcher, or an iron hand all sound absolutely terrifying. These were the names given to the ancient weapons called the Claw of Archimedes. The claw comes with its own mysteries, but has been described as a crane with a grappling hook on the end used to defend Syracuse's city walls by the sea. The weapon was invented by its namesake, Archimedes, and was a staple in the Second Punic War in the year 214 BC. This war brought 60 warships to Syracuse by the Roman Republic under the leadership of Marcus Claudius Marcellus. The Claw of Archimedes came in, surely came in hand, when the ships arrived to the city in the dark of night. The claws were deployed to sink the fleet of Roman ships and to utterly confuse the Roman warriors. The existence of the claws are still disputed, to the point that a team of people even tried to recreate the invention to prove that it might have been possible to create such a machine. Number 10. Caltrop In the Battle of Carhe during 53 BC, a new type of weaponry was used against the advancements of an enemy on land. This sneaky weapon was called a caltrop, or in other terms, a jagged iron. The caltrop was an arrangement of sharp nails or spikes, almost in a star shape, that were laid on an area of land where one's enemy would need to cross in order to attack. These sharp nails would pierce horses, troops, elephants, camels, or chariots, you name it, as they attempted to advance. The intention behind this invention was to slow down the enemy as it came on foot to attack. One spike would shoot upward, while two or three more were planted into the ground for stability. The caltrop is still used in modern-day warfare, 
However, instead of piercing elephants or horses, they can pierce wheeled vehicles. They were found in many areas across the world from America to Japan and were used in both world wars. As time went on, the original design of the caltrop was modified and became even more effective and efficient. By World War II, the modern caltrop, also known as crow's feet by this time, was being dropped from aircrafts in containers weighing in at 500 kilograms and dispersed with an explosive. Number 9. Urumi Swords and whips are perfectly destructive on their own, but when the two were combined to make the Urumi weapon, violence took a turn. The Urumi is constructed from either iron or brass and mimics the design of a whip, but equipped with blades of steel attached to either handle. The weapon requires a certain formidable knowledge and understanding to wield, as the blade and the force of the whip are bound to cause serious injury. The Urumi is taught in Indian martial arts as the weapon originated in what is now modern-day Kerala in India. Kalari Payatu is a specific type of martial art that teaches the Urumi and it must be noted that this instruction is always taught last. The weapon is said to date back to the Sangam period, which occurred during the 6th century. It requires immense control to wield two of these destructive weapons and when the wielder is not using its force, it is worn around their waist as though it were a belt. Number 8. The Scissor Yes, you probably have a pair of scissors lying around in your junk drawer. And yes, you know that if handled incorrectly, that pair of scissors could be dangerous, <laughs> but not nearly as dangerous as the scissor of the Roman era. Though there's still much speculation of the reality and existence of the scissor, it has been said that this name referred to a certain type of Roman gladiator. This came to the attention of a German historian and experimental archaeologist by the name of Marcus Junkelmann. He came to the assumption that the scissor gladiator used a weapon that attached to their forearm, which attached a blade to their limb. There was probably a handle inside the steel tube covering the gladiator's forearm in order for him to have better precision and control over the weapon when used in battle. This gladiator would be able to slice and dice his opponent in war, making him one of the more deadly gladiators in Rome. Number 7. Shuriken Perhaps you've heard of throwing stars, or ninja stars, as a modern-day weapon. These deadly pieces are also called shuriken in Japanese, which translates to hand-hidden blade. The shuriken was used as a supplement to a samurai sword and other weaponry. Like a sword, there's a certain way one must wield a shuriken, and this is known as shurikenjutsu. This method is taught in martial arts and in many martial arts schools. Now, the infamous shape of the ninja stars are not the only types of shuriken around. There is one type called a bo shuriken, which is basically a straight piece of steel or iron with four sides. This is another terrifying version of this throwing weapon and can range from 12 to 21 centimeters and average in about 35 to 150 grams. As with the throwing stars, there is a very specific way of wielding the bo shuriken. For example, one might throw it overhead, underarm, or sideways. Sometimes the thrower might spin the weapon, and other times perhaps not. Either way, no one would want to come face to face with a shuriken. Number 6. Kopesh We may all have a uniquely different image that comes to mind when someone mentions a sword, as there are still many different types of swords in the world. The objective of the weapon remained steadfast, but the design of the sword has always been subject to change. The kopesh is one iteration of a sword from ancient history. It is described as a sickle-shaped sword that originated from battle axes. Around 2500 BC in Egypt, during the Bronze Age, the kopesh made its first appearance. It is a representation of, perhaps, the oldest sword design that was used in North Africa. The weapon, coming in at 50 to 60 centimeters long, would curve inside in order to trap the enemy's arm or even knock their shield out of the way. This design came from the Epsilon and was depicted on a monument. In the depiction, one can see the King Eanatum of Lagash using this weapon, but by 1300 BC, the Kopesh was no longer used in warfare and probably evolved into another type of weapon. Throughout history, we have seen depictions of pharaohs wielding the Kopesh, 
as well as finding them in royal graves such as the one and only Tutankhamun's grave. Number five, Bag Nak. If you thought taking a punch was hard, I bet you would imagine taking a hit from someone wielding a Bag Nak. This weapon looks something like a claw and hails from the Indian subcontinent. The piece is supposed to be fitted over one's knuckles or hidden in the palm of one's hand. They are blades protruding out of a metal bar that can easily cut into one's opponent, slashing their skin and even their muscle. The name Bagnach translates from Hindi to tiger's claw, and for good reason. At one point, the Bagnach was laced with poison and used for assassinations, while other Bagnach wielders hid it in their turbans, and when retrieved, they held it in one hand and their sword in the other. From thieves to wrestlers, the Bagnach was widely used in various settings for violence. Today, there are many similar weapons, such as brass knuckles, karambit, and vajra mushti. Number four, mangonel. The trebuchet was a terribly popular invention for ancient warfare. Each country had their own version, but the traction trebuchet may have been the first iteration dating Bacall, the way to the 4th century BC. The traction trebuchet, or mangonel, was first used in ancient China, and its popularity spread all over Eurasia during the 6th century. It was operated with sheer manpower by the pulling of cords that were attached to a lever to ultimately project ammunition at one's enemies. It was not necessarily a complex invention to use, but it did require a lot of manpower to operate properly. The projectiles reached anywhere from 40 to 50, to 90 meters away, which made them the perfect weapon to station on wall for defense against approaching enemies. Everything from logs to burning charcoal was launched from this 5.2 meter long contraption to take out the opponent. The mangonel added to the long list of siege weapons used in ancient history. Number three, the lantern shield. During the Italian Renaissance, there was one particular piece of warfare that was used during nighttime duels. The dark of night would surely wreak havoc on and the already ugly sight of a battle. In turn, the lantern shield was invented. This invention rings true to its name. It was in fact a shield combined with a lantern. It would be a circular shield with a hook to hang said lantern on it. This was used commonly to blind one's opponent with the lantern light as they fought. In some, there was even a mechanism to dim or brighten the light for an element of surprise. A fabric was sometimes used to cover the lantern as to not let the glare from inside of the shield distract the wielder. In other iterations, the piece might include spikes, gauntlets, or sword blades. However convenient and ingenious this invention was at the time, it was not commonly used in battles or duels, but instead more so to patrol cities or towns late at night in Italy. From this invention, more such ideas were brought forth as a lantern pistol which turned in the 18th or 19th century. Number two, Shotel. The Shotel sword is a one meter long curved blade that was truly efficient in causing terror and destruction. As far back as 700 BC, the Shotel sword was used and originated in Northern Ethiopia. The blade is in a semicircular shape while also being flat, double-edged with a diamond cross section. The handles were made of either rhino horn or wood. Evidence suggests that the first people to make use of the shotel swords were the people of the Damotian civilization. Shotel wielders, or shotelai, were a group of trained warriors who knew how to properly operate this weapon. These warriors would use hooking techniques with the weapon and could attack both mounted and dismounted opponents. The warriors themselves could also be mounted or dismounted. The shotel was the perfect piece of weaponry to take a man off his horse in one fell swoop. Even shields were no match for this invention. It would primarily attack opponents' vital organs, such as the kidney or the lungs, during battle and proved to be a truly deadly weapon. Later on, the shotel sword was replaced by other versions or types of swords that came through the area via trade routes. Number one, Archimedes Steam Cannon. Archimedes was a significant inventor of many different types of weapons. One of his more advanced inventions was the steam cannon. This contraption was similar to a normal cannon, 
However, the steam cannon was able to launch ammunition with only heat and water. In order for this invention to work, a large tube, ideally made of copper material, would be placed into a furnace. It would then be loaded and capped, and finally, a very small amount of water was added to the back of the projectile, and boom, a cannon event. Eventually, as science progressed, steam was used in a multitude of ways, for example, steam machine guns and steam locomotives. The steam cannon is attributed to Archimedes during the siege of Syracuse. However, it is said that Leonardo da Vinci had also dabbled in the design of the steam cannon. That's right, some sketches of the Archimedes cannon signed by Leonardo da Vinci were found in 1838 among da Vinci's papers by Etienne Jean de la Cluse of the Institut de France. These were later published in the weekly review called L'Artiste in 1841. And that's when people learned about steam cannons. Both da Vinci and Archimedes had figured out that, as water turned to vapor, it would expand and be useful for the projection of objects. Geniuses. Well, these all seem pretty scary. Which of these weapons do you think is the most threatening? Were there any other types of deadly machines that were used back in ancient times that you know about? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you.